welcome to the Society of Professional Journalists video on ethics. I'm Professor Kim Fox, Journalism Program Coordinator at Texas State University. Ethics is a vital component of the journalism profession. This short video isn't meant to be a comprehensive examination of ethics, but should provide some basics for student journalists. So let's get started. Media ethics begins with you, you the student journalist. So let's take a look at the difference between law and ethics. Laws are legislated by governments. It's a defined right or wrong. Congress, your state legislators, they make laws. Ethics are a set of guidelines, acceptable behaviors, moral values, professional standards. Virtually every profession has a code of ethics. So ethics means doing the right thing. But where did you learn to do what is right? Probably from your family or your faith or friends or school or really a combination of all of those. But do you all have to agree on what is the right thing to do? What is the ethical action? In ethics, we don't have to all agree, but we do use a common set of guidelines or standards to help us make decisions. So let's take a look at photos, for example. You saw the photo on that first page. This photo was taken by me. I use the photo because I own it. This is a matter of law. So photos and copyright, that's a matter of law. There are rules um, and laws that govern what you can use. You can't just take somebody else's content and call it your own. So on the next page where I wanted to use images of family and faith, um, I went to Google Images because there are so many images online, but can I just take any image from the web that I want to use? The answer is no. Just because images are online does not make them free. Somebody owns them, unless they've been posted under what's known as Creative Commons. You may see the little CC or Creative Commons sometimes. Or in Google Tools or Google Images, you can go to Tools and you can search under labeled for non-commercial reuse or any of these other areas. And you can find images that are purposely there um, for you to use how you choose. So in that case, it's perfectly okay to use them. It's not okay to take a photo and use it um, when somebody else took the photo, right? So you can't just take my photo and use it unless I give you permission. So that's a law and that's copyright. On the other hand, Let's think about ethics, right? So why do I label this photo by Kim Fox? Is it because I want to take credit for it? Well, of course, that's one of the reasons. We want to take credit for the work we do, and that makes sense. But it's also because I need to take responsibility for it. We use photo credits and bylines because we're taking responsibility for the work that we produce. So let's think about photo editing, right? Because we don't just produce photos um, we often produce the photo and we edit the photo. So here's the same image. I shot this photo and now here's the image on the right. What's the difference between these two images? The photo on the right has been edited. Look, it no longer says newsroom on top of the wall. So this could be any room if I didn't want it to be the newsroom. And his t-shirt logo is gone. Maybe for some reason I don't like what's on his t-shirt. So I've taken it off, is that okay? Not in journalism, this is not okay because journalists are taking photos that represent reality. It needs to be what really happened. You can't take things out of a photo just because you don't like them or because they're distracting. So we don't do this type of editing in journalism. On the other hand, let's take a look at this photo. This is the same photo. Newsroom is still there, the t-shirt logo is still there, but you'll notice the photo looks a little different. Look towards the top of the photo. Um, there's not as much ceiling, there's not as much side over behind her. So we can crop a photo. This photo is cropped to bring us closer to the action, and that's perfectly okay. We didn't change the reality, we just focused um, on the action a little more closely. Cropping is all right in journalism. How do we know these things? There are so many guidelines for us to follow. The SPJ Code of Ethics is sort of the basis of many of the codes of ethics that our profession have. So media outlets may adopt their own code or they may adopt the SPJ Code of Ethics. Your newsroom may decide to adopt the SPJ Code of Ethics. 
The Code of Ethics is an abiding set of principles. It's best practices. It's guidelines, not rules. These aren't rules that are so easy to follow. They're guidelines that help us make good decisions. So let's think, uh, let's talk about what's in the Code of Ethics. There are four guiding principles and so many details underneath each one. Seek the truth and report it. Journalists should be honest, fair, courageous in gathering and reporting and interpreting information. Seeking the truth is one of the most important things we do. Act independently. The highest and primary obligation of ethical journalism is to serve the public. We're not serving um, any one interest, we're serving the public, so we act independently. Minimize harm. This can be a tough one because we will report on things that may indeed be difficult for some people, but journalists work to minimize harm. Ethical journalists treat sources, subjects, and colleagues as human beings deserving of respect. Be accountable and transparent. Ethical journalism means taking responsibility for one's work. Remember the byline, the photo credit? We take responsibility and we explain our decisions to the public, letting them know why we do what we do. We stand behind our decisions. So how do you solve an ethical dilemma? Sometimes you'll hear someone say, go with your gut. Well, your gut may only get you so far. So let's look at three steps that we can consider when we're faced with an ethical dilemma. Identify the problem. Know clearly what the problem is that you're trying to solve. Have a discussion with peers, with editors, with your teachers. Talk about the different ways you might proceed. What are your options? Come to a decision, one that you can justify thoroughly if anyone asks how and why you did what you did. So be ready to stand behind your decision. So let's take a look at a few um, guiding principles that might help your student newsroom. Seek the truth and report it. We know that journalists are supposed to be fair and honest and courageous in gathering and interpreting information. So don't make stuff up, right? Verify the information that you've gotten. Make sure that it is true and as complete as it can be. And don't plagiarize, right? Don't take somebody else's work and say it's your own. Don't use somebody else's photo. Don't take somebody else's story. Be complete and accurate. Um, you may have heard the term, you know, a lie by omission. So be complete and accurate as much as possible. And don't manipulate digital photos. We've already covered this one pretty much. Cropping is fine. Working on the lighting a little bit is fine, but do not manipulate digital photos beyond reality. How about acting independently? Don't lie to get a story. You've got to be honest that you're working on a story. I'm talking to you because I'm working on a story and I'm going to publish this information. Or I'm taking your photo because I'm going to publish this photo. And don't accept free stuff. This can be a hard one. No free pizza. But when you're acting independently, that means you're not beholden to anyone for favors. And so if your teacher buys you pizza, that's great. If a friend buys pizza, a parent send pe sends pizza, that's all fine. But if a local business sends you pizza and says, please come do a story on us, then it certainly looks like you're doing a story because you got pizza. So I'm sorry, no free pizza. What about minimizing harm? So let's think about this. Private people have a greater right to control the information about themselves. So private people, that might mean for you, other students. They have a greater right than public figures or people who seek power and influence. So think about who has power and influence in the community you're covering. Is it the superintendent? Is it the student body president? Is it somebody who's an officer of an organization or a school board member? People who seek power and influence and attention deserve to have a greater focus put on their actions. Private people um, should have a greater sense of control over what they're telling you and how you use that information. How about be accountable and transparent? What does that look like? Don't quote your friends. And this might be hard because you may know a lot of people, but don't quote your friends because friends tell us what we want to hear and we may not be as objective about the information our friends provide us. And don't cover organizations or activities that you're involved in. Also, that can be difficult. It seems 
It might be easy to have the person in band cover band because they're always there. But that person in band may not be as willing to be honest and see warts and all about what's going on. So we don't cover organizations we're involved with. And even if we think, oh, I could be completely fine with that, think about what it looks like from the outside. What do others see when they see you writing about your friends or about band? To them, it looks like this media organization is just a club. It's just for the people who are in the door. How about this? Really important about being accountable. Encourage people to tell you if you make a mistake. Your readers, your viewers, if you get something wrong, you need to know. Otherwise, you just might repeat it again. So encourage people to tell you if you get something, something wrong and then be sure to correct it. SPJ has so many resources with respect to the Code of Ethics. So you can go online and check out the Code of Ethics. You can print out posters and bookmarks. It's also translated into a number of different languages because this is used all over the world. There's also an ethics hotline. And so um, just about anybody can contact the ethics hotline with a question. So a journalist, a member of the public and students. So go online and ask questions of the experts. Thank you for joining me today and be sure to check out other videos in this series on SPJ's YouTube channel playlist, Press for Education. Topics include reporting basics, editing, headline tips, broadcast writing, fake news, and media law for students. And remember, we need good journalism and good journalists now more than ever.